welcome to episode 72 of Midworld Friday, July 20th, 2018, Messaging Scenarios in Azure. So we haven't done that much uh, recording lately because it's summertime currently in the Netherlands. Uh, during this recording, it's actually 30 degrees Celsius outside, so it's quite hot. It's kind of, we are living in the tropics the last couple of weeks. And in this episode, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, messaging scenarios. So this is a little... Um, let's say summary of my talk of integrate um, but here specifically I'll go into some messaging scenarios and there's some feature content the blog by Paco Lafouz from Mexian talks a bit about uh, durable functions and I also talk a little bit about uh, Service 360 blog uh, later on as well so as you know there are kind of a few Azure messaging services uh, in Azure available so you have the service bus for enterprise messaging. I think you're pretty familiar uh, with uh, this service. It's been out there for uh, 12 years now, um, and it kind of gives you reliable message capability in Azure uh, transaction, um, first in fifth uh, ordering, etc. Then you have event hubs, and this is for uh, big data streaming. So think about ingestion of big uh, telemetry. You have storage queues. Those are simple like task queues you can use. Um, also reliable. Um, but you know, it's only queues versus with Service Bus, uh, you have also the capability of uh, a, a pops up type of uh, uh, messaging um, available. And then you have one of the latest additions. Um, this became GA at the beginning of the year, which is Event Grid, and it kind of gives you the ability to, uh, to build reactive solutions. So it's more reaction driven where you can handle um, events. So let's look at a few scenarios. So I think you're familiar with um, the scenario that's depicted here. It's uh, been showcased uh, in one of the previous um, Middle of Friday shows. So it's basically the, um, a receipt, a picture of a receipt that's being um, digested via, via Microsoft Flow. It ends up in Azure Blob Storage and where uh, it, it kind of acts as an event source. Um, it's hooked into Event Grid, basically. So the event of, hey, there's a blob created is pushed to, uh, to Event Grid, which subsequently pushes it to um, one or multiple subscribers that are interested in the event and the event subsequently uh, ends up in a function which sends it off to uh, computer vision and api so you can leverage the uh, cloud capability there uh, pre-built ai and the results of the optical character recognition of that received is then pushed through a uh, to service bus so there's another messaging component which subsequently would trigger um, a process that would further digest this data and potentially reimburse the person who uh, submits the receipt. Then you can think about a scenario where you have event hubs. So this is the ingestion of data. So let's say um, you have a website, public facing website, and you just want to ingest all the data of you know visitors um, coming to your website, but also what kind of page clicks they do. So you can digest all that data into your event hubs, and then you can have one or multiple consumer groups that could um, hook, could be as a service where or at least a group where you can have your services digest that data so you can have a service um, getting data from consumer group one you can have another consumer group um, that does the real-time processing of page clicks so you can think about um, stream analytics that pushes into data lake um, you can have that function that pushes it to cosmos db to a collection for instance then there's another scenario this is more involved where you you can position the um, the task queue so it's provisioning of Azure resources. So this is based on a project I've done. And the API, the gateway for a request coming in is a containerized uh, application. So basically it's a, an API that is, has an endpoint saying, okay, here you can, you can push the request to. Um, subsequently, the request is just a, a message, a task that's going to be picked up by a web job, the web job. Subsequently, provisions a storage account, a SQL instance, Elastic Pool, and both of the connection strings are then pushed into Key Vault. So this was quite difficult to do an ARM tent of another way. So this architecture gave, basically gives the ability for a multi-tenant uh, kind of overall solution to create Azure resources specifically for that tenant. Then there's another example. Um, where you can combine messaging services. So here you can combine event grid and event hub. So event hub has the capability of capture. So you can capture events. They're captured in storage, but also the capture event is kind of pushed to event grid as an event. And the event grid subsequently can push that data to subscribers with really function saying, okay, hey, give me that file and I'll push it into um, the SQL warehouse. This is a great example of a combination of, of services um, 
um, messaging services are collaborating together. So basically all these services could collaborate together. They're not competing with each other. They all can all collaborate with each other. And this is another example of kind of um, shows this. Then let's look at another microservice process. And this is more like chaining um, workload, basically. So you have one queue that receives a message, pushes it to a microservice running in a container, which subsequently um, pushes data into a storage temporarily. Subsequently, it will push a message to another um, microservice, completely isolated, completely decoupled, again, through um, using a service bus message, uh, message queue, basically. So you can chain all, um, all kind of microservices as a flow to process data. So this is kind of an example where um, this is I showed this during integrate where you know I push in a message, a message will subsequently get net and data out of a storage, which is pushed there previously. It will then parse that data and push it to another storage, but then subsequently push a message out towards the second service of microservice that kind of has to further parse or just digest that data. So again, even in, in the microservices world, um, where all these microservices each have their you know specific task, but you can chain them together, leveraging the service bus, for instance. And then there's another example, um, the service home automation. So let's assume you have a house wired with devices that measure CUT levels, the temperature, etc. And you can push that data for IT Hub via Event Hubs to a function which subsequently will push that data into a Cosmos DB database. Um, every time temperature changes, these end up in the Cosmos DB, but there's another function that kind of uh, subscribes or is based on the chains feed um, implementation. And in Cosmos DB, kind of you can trigger a function every time a new um, data is being entered into the Cosmos DB. Let's say, and the temperature gets too high, for instance, then that data can be pushed to a um, service bus queue. And this subsequently, when there's a listener, there's this uh, logic app. Logic app says, you know, out of the box, many connectors. And through SMS or through an email, could notify um, the, the homeowner uh, through an application uh, on his phone. And then subsequently, he could, for instance, send a, uh, a command through the functions IoT Hub back to the sensor saying, hey, you should lower the temperature or you should uh, enable the uh, air conditioning. So let's do a little bit of a demo of this particular messaging scenario. So here I am in my um, change feed, or this is kind of my collection in Cosmos DB, uh, supporting the change feed implementation. So here are just, this is kind of the state of this particular home, home ID 25, as you can see, right here. And you know, you see different type of temperatures. So let's say the kitchen, you have something cooking and it starts to become really hot. I'm just, just exaggerating a bit. Then this kind of triggers a change in a function. So let's move to the function. This is what the function is. So basically, this function gets triggered. You will say, hey, there's a, the temperature is above 25. This means that there's a message going to be put out to the message um, queue, or, which will subsequently trigger that event or not the event up that will trigger as you can see here the logic app and the logic app basically will send out a message towards so this is this is quickly this is kind of yeah, here it is this is what I want to show this is what comes in so that's that document here you see the temperature in uh, almost 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, and the email sent out is like, hey, this is to my email address. Kitchen is too hot. So let's move over to my, and there you go. See, kitchen is too hot, 95.5. So this is basically a small example, a part of the complete solution. But yes, you can see there's some messaging involved. So this was my service home automation part. So I showed you a little bit about the change feed, which basically leads to a trigger of a function and then a notification sent out to my email.
there's some considerations in general when you're looking at some of the messaging scenarios in general when you want to choose your services. So based on your scenario, you have to choose the right, right messaging service or services as you do. As I mentioned already before, they can collaborate really well together. They're competing with each other, you can have multiple of these Azure services within a solution like Event Hubs and Event Grid in one of the scenarios. Think about workloads. So workloads as in how much uh, are you going to, to digest? So when you have to scale up um, um, with beautiful microservices, for instance, then of course, um, decouple them and chain them together to, to process that workload. And you can see that you know the, uh, the service bus really fits in pretty well. But in general, you just have to look at the workloads because of how you want to scale, etc., or maybe how you need in your architecture to do some load leveling or balancing. Then there's security and compliance, which you have to think, uh, think about as well with regards to your messaging components and your overall solution. Cross-platform, so for instance, if you have to support cross-platform, then the service bus is kind of your uh, best option in that perspective. You have to about, think about cost in general, but all these kind of capabilities and services are pretty low cost, so you really have to generate a very huge workload. But thinking about these services, also think about how you're going to connect your messaging services capability with other Azure services. So it wouldn't be smart to, for instance, push a lot of events through, let's say, a logic app, because then you accumulate a lot of actions and it could be very um, costly. So you have to think also in your architecture how you're going to push those messages through because those messaging services are really able to really ramp up and scale and digest or consume a lot of messaging while not you know you're going to spend a lot of cost on but it's also the services behind your messaging services that could potentially get burst with a lot of load and then you can also accumulate a lot of cost and then in general you also have to think about devops and management of your service capability and you know this serve, this this show is hosted by uh, Bistro 360. Also, they have an offering to manage some of the Azure services uh, for you with their SaaS solution. And we'll look at some of the community content. So I just wanted to point out this really nice blog post on durable functions, which was created by Paco de la Cruz, who was recently also um, um, appointed the MVP award. So he's now amidst uh, us MVPs and he has some written some interesting stuff around durable functions, which I also think will be showcased um, uh, later this year um, when we'll do an episode around durable functions as well. But definitely uh, check this one out, which is on the next year blog. And then there's another blog and this also talks about messaging options in the Microsoft Azure platform. And this is on the Service 360 blog. So the Service 360 will now also start to ramp up and have a few people like myself write um, guest blog posts on this um, also to showcase a little bit what the uh, service 360 can do for you so this is one of the posts that, that will also talk about some of the stuff i've been talking here as well and some of the scenarios but it will go a little bit more in depth finally i want to shout out uh, for a, a very nice azure event i was able to talk there last year it's called cloud Roots. so it's the 12th of october and the 13th of October, so two days, it's in Belgium. So definitely, if you're interested in two days of conference all around different um, Azure topics, definitely go there if you have the time available for it. It's very interesting. And you could register right there on the link that's uh, below. I unfortunately won't be there because I will still be in Chicago and recuperating from the marathon I will run on the 7th of October. Okay. I want to thank you uh, all for watching um, this episode during the, uh, the very hot summer here in Holland, although you might not notice it, but I do. Um, thanks, Big Sophie 360, for being a great host, and also thank you for watching. And I will leave you here with the music credits of the latest album of a Hopes Fall called Arbiter. <laughs>